We are about to take you into the depths of a story never before seen, a story whose details have been lost to the decades of water and pine, a story handed down by word of mouth only to be refashioned, reframed, and rephrased by each tongue. Here we have another tale, one that will take you back to the beginning of the legend, one that will expose the truth. Or will it? Our story begins in a laboratory in Fresno, California. The year is 1937, and this is the lab of one Dr. Julia Walter, a small animal biologist at Fresno State University, a woman known as much for her intelligence as she was her secrets. But Dr. Walter also harbored an untold passion, a passion for chipmunks. But some of her fellow scientists thought she was too enthusiastic about these furry little creatures. Old face with the chipmunks. Her depraved obsessions know no bounds. Someone must silence the perpetual cheap, cheap, cheeping within her tortured mind. It was like she was a trying to talk to it. It was a too much. A cheap, a cheap, a cheap in the morning. A cheap, a cheap, a cheap in the afternoon. A cheap, a cheap, a cheap before the antipasto. A cheap, a cheap, a cheap before the main course. A cheap, a cheap, a cheap before the tiramisu. A cheap, a cheap, a cheap before the espresso. A cheap, a cheap, a cheap before bed. It was making me crazy. I make science as well. That's right, Dr. Walter was conducting experiments on chipmunks. Why? Well, why don't we let the good doctor speak for herself? Cause they're cute. That's why you look into the face of a sweet, chubby little chipmunk and tell me that's not the cutest thing you've ever seen. I dare you. So yeah, I wanted a bigger one. Sue me. Dr. Walter was creating growth serums to increase the size of her little monks. Most notably, she wanted to increase the size of their cheeks to intensify the cuteness factor. Soon, she would move her lab to the backpacking shed of Gold Arrow Camp. There, she would pet them, talk with them, and even show them how to dance. Yet serum after serum, year after year, of injecting chipmunk cheeks went by, and success eluded her. That was until one day, with Serum 33, she finally saw a change. I couldn't have been happier. The little guy was so pleasantly plump, his cheeks were the size of oranges, but... I wanted more. I knew I could do better. But again, her fellow doctors were not quite as excited as she was. She is conducting all of these experiments and using all of the equipment. There are no flash. There are no funnels. There's nothing for me to use. She nothing. has all the glassware. She's she using all of the glassware. She took it all. She took everything. It's unbelievable. Oh, so what? So she can look at the chipmunks and their chubby cheeks? It was ridiculous. They were jealous. Jealous of me. And my talents, and my chubby cheek chippies, I got more talent than any of them in my little finger. I kissed one of those chipmunks once. But Dr. Walter would not rest. With Serum 33, she knew she would soon have exactly what she had always wanted. A chipmunk whose cheeks were the size of actual basketballs. But in her haste, she was careless. The serum was left out, and when the scientists returned the next morning, the laboratory was a mess. Dr. Walter's chipmunk had consumed the entire bottle of Serum 33 and escaped right out of the lab. But one day, while out on a hike, Manny Veazey crossed paths with a large cougar. I steadied myself to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that cougar. I was a football player in college, you know. When out of the shadows, something knocked me over. It was big and brown. I thought it was a deer or something. I was on the ground. I was scared. But not that scared. Manny watched as the chipmunk pounced on the cougar using some really sweet moves. The chipmunk saved Manny that day, and in the years since, Manny knew that the chipmunk would always look out for the staff and campers of Gold Arrow Camp, and his presence has always been a token of good luck. Nobody knows exactly what happened that night or to that chipmunk since then, not even Dr. Walter herself. 
But legend has it that when he hears the sweet cheep, cheep, cheep that Dr. Walter bestowed upon his ears so long ago, he will make his presence felt, seen, and maybe even do a little dance. the chipmunk finally used his elbows and his knees and he submitted that cougar to submission <laughs> <laughs>